using machine learning to predict which employees might be looking for a job change. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Dr. David Allen, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Management and Associate Dean of Graduate Programs at Texas Christian University. Welcome, Dr. Allen. Thanks, Tanya. Happy to be here. So give us a brief summary of your background as it relates to your study of the workplace. So I'm a professor of management and my primary research area is the flow of people and the flow of human capital into and out of organizations. And this particular research that I've been doing more recently is taking advantage of technology to try to do a better job of understanding and predicting um, who's likely to leave an organization, who's open to changing jobs, and, uh, and when they're likely to quit. So as you mentioned, you co-authored co a recent story that appeared in the Harvard Business Journal on using machine learning to predict how receptive individuals would be to new job opportunities. So tell us about that. I did. So I, my collaborator is Professor Brooks Holtum at Georgetown University. And our, our primary interest is that in our experience, the ways that most companies deal with employee turnover issues uh, are pretty limited. So they collect data from exit interviews that only tap those who are leaving um, and, and are happening after the fact when it's mostly too late to do anything about it. Or they collect employee survey data once or twice a year and they try and track if, if employee attitudes uh, might predict quitting at some point in the future. And, and the reality is it's pretty modest. Um, so what we did is we worked with uh, some data scientists at a firm called Engage Talent uh, to identify signals um, that people are putting off, people and companies are sort of emitting um, digital signals uh, that would serve as indicators of things that we know are related to employee turnover. Um, so for example, uh, one of the primary uh, ways that we think about what causes people to leave is something called, we call it a shock, but it's really, it's any kind of jarring event or change that occurs that makes people start thinking about whether they might leave or not. So uh, what we did is collect data from publicly available sources on things like news stories about a particular organization, for example, announcing a merger would be an example of something that would cause people that work there to reevaluate their employment situation. We looked at things like variations in stock price of a company um, and those various things like that to try to identify organizations where the people that work there might be more open to a recruitment message, more open to thinking about changing jobs. Explain the turnover propensity index or the TPI and how you calculated this? Yeah, so for the TPI, um, we started with a list of types of data that we felt fit into this larger framework um, of predicting turnover. So we developed a list of indicators of shocks. Uh, we developed a list of indicators of what we call job embeddedness. So embeddedness is how closely linked someone is to other people um, and, and, and to their community and, and embedded in ways that would make it more challenging for them to leave. So an example there would be data on their employment anniversary um, because the longer someone's been with a company, it affects their likelihood of turnover. But also there's interesting data that suggests that around work anniversaries, people are more willing uh, and likely to make a change of some kind. Um, so then uh, we collected data from over 500,000 people um, on a very wide spectrum of potential indicators uh, and, and working with these data scientists, um, they used some machine learning algorithms uh, in order to develop what appeared to be the best predictive indicators um, and helped us develop this turnover propensity index in which we wound up assigning scores to people that ranged from least likely to be open to moving to most likely uh, to be open to moving. But in a time when disruption is a mainstream business strategy, aren't most people receptive to new job opportunities? 
Uh, I think you'd be surprised because although people are receptive, organizations are often, they're targeting what we would call passive job candidates. So these are people that are already employed um, and they may not even be actively looking. Um, <clears throat> so for example, one of the things that we did is we selected a subset of the 500,000 original sample. Um, we sent uh, a recruitment email to 2,000 people. And uh, with those types of recruitment messages, the rate of people who open them is very small. Um, most people just ignore those. Um, but in our sample, the people who we had rated as most likely uh, to be open to a job change message were more than twice as likely uh, to open the email. And then once they opened it, uh, they were also more likely to actually click through on the, on the link to get more information about it. How successful is your algorithm so far? So from, from the, a big picture perspective, we think it has a lot of potential because um, we also then followed up with that sample of 500,000 and uh, tracked them over a three month period to see who actually changed jobs. And again, the folks who our algorithm, who the TPI identified as being most likely to be open to a job change, they were 68% more likely to change jobs than the folks that, that the TPI classified as least likely to change. Um, so we think that's really promising. And we actually think that, that it's even potentially more promising if we then turn that lens internally within one organization. Because what we were doing is looking very broadly across big picture organizational economic shocks and, and signals of embeddedness that would affect, uh, affect affect people. But it, if you think about the data that organizations have on their own employees, um, if we turn the same methodolo methodology internally, uh, then we think that it would be even more powerful. So as you turn that lens, what ethical considerations and safeguards would you recommend? Yeah, so that that's actually a big concern uh, in this particular area. Um, and there's several things to think about. So one is, is there are privacy concerns, right? So in our research, we stuck with things that were publicly available. Um, but if you think about an organizational context, they have access to, for example, their employee healthcare records. Um, they have access to the email communications that people send using their, their work systems. So I think it's important to think carefully uh, about what types of data you do and don't want to include in an algorithm like this from a privacy perspective. And there's also sort of what I'll just call the creepy factor. Um, because one of the challenges uh, that organizations are facing as they try to, to identify people who are likely to quit is if an algorithm tells you that Tanya is very likely to quit the job in the near future, what exactly, as a manager, are you supposed to do with that information? Um, do you run to Tanya and say, hey, we can tell from your email traffic that you're thinking about quitting? Pe people might see that as a bit invasive and as sort of a creepy invasion of privacy. Um, so we're still sort of uh, working out what are, what are the best practical approaches uh, to dealing with the technology. Dr. David Allen, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Management, Associate Dean of Graduate Programs at Texas Christian University. Thanks for joining us and shedding some light on this new survey. It's a little scary, but also there's some opportunity here. So if somebody wants to find out more about it, how can they do that? I think the best ways uh, would be my TCU email address, which is david.allen at tcu.edu, or follow me on Twitter, which is at DGA underscore talent prof. Sounds good. Thanks again. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.